What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, y'all? I am your girl, Candy, and to my left, we have Tamika Scott in the building. Hey, 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 hey. And she is about to speak on it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> she done put a little soul you know, into speak on it. I can't do falsetto. That's right, you do I can't do it. I wish I could. Okay, you do it. There you go. <laughs> hey, I take the soul for it. <laughs> well, speak on it. This has been a long time coming. The fans have been asking for you to sit on the speak Uh-oh. on it chair so that you can give it to us. But before we get started, Tamika surprised me with a full home cooked meal that she made. Hello. Okay. <laughs> hey, girl, we got on the same. It's gonna be a little different interview today. She's she gonna come with it. Yes, <laughs> she knows the key to my heart. <laughs> What's on the menu? It's through my belly. I have cabbage, rice, cream of chicken, rice. Um, I mean, cream of chicken is gonna go over the rice. I have my sweet and spicy salmon and macaroni and cheese. Oh, it's ready. So we can make a plate. Just a little sauce. So, this is gonna be one of those. What is this called? Uh, this is gonna be a muck. Bong or mukbang. Yeah. I don't have slash speak on it. All my plate by <laughs> She came over here with a whole pan of cabbage, macaroni and cheese. Mm hmm. Mm mm. The regular meat, the no less eat. Amen. You know, I don't know if you guys know this, but I've been telling you that she has a cookbook and all these recipes are in the cookbook, right? Mm -hmm. So let's show it to you here. Her new cookbook, Table Set Cooking with Tamika Scott, a taste of the South in mm. your mouth. That's right. Smacking, macking macaroni and cheese, not your average cabbage. Oh, not your average cabbage. I like that. My sweet and spicy salmon. And of course, just some regular rice, girl. And then fancy about no rice. Mmm. Mmm. That's good, y'all. This macaroni and cheese is good. You know, normally I be judging people's food because even though I don't cook a lot, I can cook. I know you don't know that because I ain't never cooked for you. <laughs> I be saying you so cook. So when I people, when I taste people's food, I'm like, hmm, but this good. Thank you, girl. girl. You better cook, girl. <laughs> and that's spicy. I mean, what you said, spicy? My, my sweet and spicy salmon. Oh, I love it. Thank you, baby. I love the sweet and the spicy. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mmm. Okay. No, I'm not even going to be able to concentrate on you because I'm over here thinking about this food right here. I feel like a 10-year-old. And you like to dance when you eat. Mm -hmm, That's how I be doing. That's how I be doing. <laughs> nah, this is definitely good. You know me. I tell you the truth. Now. Yes, you will. Mm -hmm. You ain't got no problem telling the truth. I'll be like, stop the camera. But this is really, really good. Thank you. What made you decide you wanted to do a cookbook? Because I love to cook. Well, during the pandemic, we were home and I just started cooking because we were touring. We was doing shows. So I was like, okay, I'm home now. I can cook and just give, just, you know how I am about my babies, about my kids. Like whatever they ask for, they're going to get. Started cooking and then I started posting my plate. I will be grilling tomorrow these beautiful little steaks, but I'm going to do a little marinade to go over it. People start saying, well, how did you make that? How do you make your broccoli casserole? Or mm -hmm. how did you make that? Two cups of low Soy sauce. Make sure it's low sodium soy sauce. That's two cups of that. A cup and a third of pineapple juice. I have two cups of brown sugar. So I started DMing everybody back. And it was like towards the end of the day, I'm still DMing people. And my husband was like, baby, won't you just do a cookbook? But I was like, oh no, because sometimes you know how people know you for one thing. They yeah. can't accept you for nothing else. So I was like, they probably be like, she can't cook. You know what I mean? So yeah, you know, I don't believe in that and being stuck in one thing. I know you definitely don't. But sometimes it's hard for fans to see you in a different light. But for the first time during a, during a uh, pandemic, they were able to see me as mommy. Mm -hmm. And I started cooking. And then I said, let me go ahead and write this. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do something different with my cookbook. It's called uh, Table Set Cooking with Tamika Scott. A taste of the South in your mouth. Let's move on to the kitchen. What do you like to listen yes. to while you cook? All types of music. Like my okay. favorite singer is Michael Bolton. So uh, when uh, a man loves a woman, uh, mm, 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 mm. I can cook good <laughs> when he's singing, baby. So I wanted to, every recipe has a story attached to it. Or why I like that recipe. Mm -hmm. Or what I was doing that time in my life. Mm -hmm. So it has like from when I was seven all the way until now. Mm -hmm. So it even, it even talks about us. How we oh, were on shit. tour. How being on tour, how hard it was for us to find food that we really like. Because mm -hmm. you had Tasha and Tiny mm -hmm. always wanted to do, you know, what they wanted. We wanted the chicken. Or we wanted. So it was yeah. always like, okay, we got one restaurant. So where are we going to go? And it was like, oh, so I couldn't wait till I got home so I could cook what I wanted. Right. So stories like that, certain things are in the book. The one thing that um, 
I didn't know you liked to cook that much when we were young, young. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why as we got older and I, you know, it's like, of course, everybody grows as they become mature adults or whatever. And when you really just got in your cooking bag, I was like, okay, Tamika. Uh, <laughs> this is new Tamika. Honestly, there are a lot of things that are different about you mm-hmm. as we've gotten older. I mean, I know when we were young, you know, we had the immaturity or whatever when we were young or whatever. But as we got older, you know, and we came back together as a group, you wanted to be more involved in the business stuff. Mm-hmm. Now, when we were young, you didn't really take a lot of, you know, lead as far as the, when it dealt with the business stuff. Mm-mm. Only thing I was involved in a lot with Burt Padel was the account. Mm-hmm. I remember one time we was on the bus and I said, the bus driver turned their receipt to Bobby Sanders. Mm-hmm. So I said, Bobby, let me see their receipt. Bobby's like, oh, I'm just about to give him, he was giving him money out because we got petty cash every, every right. day. So I said, let me see what it is. Girl, this man had everything on there that did not apply to escape. Right. I said, we're not paying for this. We're not paying for this. We're not paying for this. Okay, you got light bulbs. Was that for the bus? We'll pay for this. Mm-hmm. So Bobby was like, are you serious? I'm like, yes, I'm serious. And I told y'all. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you was like, oh, good job. Good job. But, mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> so I was like so in tune with the finance part of it. Mm-hmm. So I've always been there calling mm-hmm. Burt Padel, what we doing, how much we making, you know, mm-hmm. what, are we, what are we paying out? So when it came to that, but I got really, really more involved when we came mm-hmm. back together. So what do you think changed during the time that we were separated from each other to when we got back together. Girl, I learned how to budget. (laughs) I had to learn how to budget. I would have been broke. So I was like the budgeting queen. Like I would take, I I was Jesus, honey. I would take two loaves and five fish. And by the time I finished, it was like 30,000, 40,000, 50,000. So it was like just being able to, you know, know where every dime went, being able to keep up with all the bills, making sure everything was paid. So I was like really in tune with it. And like, oh, we got some money left over. Let's do a vacation. You know what I mean? Right, so, right, right. And then let's put some away. Or, you know, oh, she's going to college. You got to make sure we have enough for her books, mm-hmm. for her apartment, for, you know, food and stuff like that. So I was very in tune with what we were spending, what was coming in. I think that was something that I was impressed by Ooh. when we got back together. Oh, wow. When we reconnected, mm-hmm. I like to say. Because it's like, you know, when you have so much time away from somebody and you know them as one person, and then when you come back together and you see all the changes, Carol. you know, you see the difference. I had whatever. to grow up, boo. I had to grow up. Because when we were when we were younger, girl, I just wanted to have fun. Joning on everybody. That's all I wanted to do. I got kicked out of the studio for joining on Jermaine. You yeah. remember that time I was joining on? Girl, he kicked me out of the studio because we were joning. And then I said something, and everybody was like, Tamika, why? That was me. I ain't going to tell you what I said. I remember what I said. I don't even remember what you said. I said something mean about his teeth. Oh, God. Everybody got You got a big snout on. Yeah, they look good. They got got a big snout. But back then, he had said something about my ghetto hairstyle or whatever. And I was like, boy, I can change my hair. What you going to do with your teeth? And he put me out the. Y'all remember that? He put me out the studio. I I vaguely remember that. I was like, so, okay, I'm going to get your teeth. Like, back then, it was like, okay. You come at me, I'm going to come back at you, but I'm going to make it funny. Mm-hmm. So that was like, it was just fun, mm-hmm. you know? But I had to grow up, girl. I had an auto kids. I had to grow the boop up and quick. Because now it's like, to me, you're very motherly. You're very catering to your family. I mean, you always been catering to your man, honey. Yes. Even but, when he didn't deserve it. Yeah. Not the one I'm with now. So you know right. what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, the previous. Mm. And, you know, obviously now it's like you're this totally mature woman. I mean... I think everybody, you know, knows that our group had took a hiatus and then, then we came back together as a group. But during that hiatus, what were you doing? So I was able to act. So I started acting. I acted with, um, I did a couple of Donald Gray's productions. Mm-hmm. I had a chance to do Stranger in My House that was um, aired on BET with Vivica Fox, Clifton Powell, uh, Angel Conwell. And then I was able to do Meet the Browns, mm-hmm. Tyler Perry's Meet the Browns. So I've been, I was acting. And then from there, I was able to start writing for, I, I wrote for his play, Was Done in the Dark. I wrote for his movie, Daddy's Little Girl. Um, I did the cover song for Why Did I Get Married? So I started just pinning. And then I had a song on there. Um, what was the name of the song? I wrote about my man, girl. <laughs> the Greatest Gift. Mm-hmm. The Greatest Gift I had wrote about him. So he, he allowed me to, to sing on um, Daddy's Little Girl soundtrack. Mm-hmm. So I was doing a lot of writing and acting too. That's dope. Was Riley... Were you able to be a part of when she was pregnant? Or were you guys... No, we weren't really talking then. We weren't talking then. We weren't talking during that time. We missed a lot of years. I would say 
you know, when the From the Time group kind of like separated, I guess, after third album, up until people saw us come back together mm -hmm. a few months before we filmed Escape Still Kicking It. That was the first reality show that we did. It was a very long span of time mm -hmm. in between. It was. You know what? Can you come? Let me talk to you. Uh -oh. Let me talk to you. Uh -oh. It was a long span of time. We missed a lot. Yeah, so I missed a lot of her important years. She missed a lot of mine or whatever. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how I feel about us joining our names on a company together yet because I didn't know how I feel about us definitely doing business together yet. I'm glad we reconnected. Me too. First, let me say that. Because now I feel like we be closer than ever now. Yes. But, you know, I just wanted to kind of catch people back up because... You know, during the course of filming our last show, Queens R&B, you know, we talked about a few things that happened. Obviously, we, we're still healing as a group from things that have happened in the past. First of all, Kelly, right either now. you in or you out. That's why I just kind of wanted to like touch on, okay, what was happening during that break of time that we weren't together or people may not have had the chance to see you. Get people caught up on Tamika, what what was going on in Tamika's life girl. during that period? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, girl, I was going through a divorce. <laughs> I was oh going God. through a divorce. Like I started dating uh, Ocean and, and Naya's dad when I was like 16. Mm -hmm. So we were, I was young, got mm -hmm. pregnant, got married. We didn't get married because we was in love. We got married because you know from the church. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you don't want to um, have your baby out of wedlock. So it's more. I didn't even know what being in love was. Child, that's not what you had the guys thinking, but okay. Yeah. yeah she had like, everybody you know, thinking they were Don't love. say everybody now. It wasn't a lot. <laughs> Who else she dated? Right. Seriously. The, the crazy one. And I think Look. he was the one I thought I was going to marry, girl. But honey, really? his parents was like, uh-uh. That was crazy. That was crazy. Now, the men that you dated in your past definitely mm -hmm. love you. Your husband loves Oh, yeah. Him. I love him, girl. You know? <laughs> so you definitely have an impact on the people who, whose lives you have touched. Aww. I would definitely say Thank that. You, Thank sure. you, boo. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to ask. So when it was just the three of you for a very long time, meaning mm -hmm. you, Tiny, Tasha. Okay. What was y'all doing as a group? I became you. What does that mean? <laughs> for the people I, I mean you so beautiful <laughs> I, I, to the people I was you they were going out to eat without me they wasn't telling me stuff they were doing I said I feel like candy right now I just feel like an outcast <laughs> I used to tell them all the time I used to joke with even A1 I used to joke with him I was like dang I feel like candy now I ain't getting no invitation to go out to eat I'm just stuck in my room oh, and that was happening even after our first reality show when yeah. I went to do Broadway mm -hmm. and you was, it was just three of y'all doing it was just a three concept. of us so it was always yeah. them two together and then I was left by my so. Well, okay. I'm going to have to ask you. If you know you felt that way during that time and you said... I said, y'all treat you me said, like candy. So you knew yes. when I would say those things in the past that there was some truth to what yeah. I was saying. It was. Yeah, we treated you like outcasts. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Now, no, I, a lot of people thought I that did, I was... Yeah, like, I did. Tripping. I was like... It was almost like if I got too close... Mm -hmm. I was too close. That's not your sister. Right. You know what I mean? So it was like, you got to bag up some. So it was like, we started out as really, really good friends. Spending out over each other's house before mm -hmm. we even started singing. Mm -hmm. Like going out to parties together. Just spending time together. Mm -hmm. And we had a, we formed a sisterhood. Yeah, you and I connected yes, first. we connected right. first. So mm -hmm. we was always together all the time. So mm -hmm. once the business got into it, it was almost like, okay, you got a sister in the group. So mm -hmm. you can't go against your sister, mm -hmm. even though when it comes to business. And it was times that I wanted to vote with you and Tiny, but I felt like I was not being loyal if I voted against my sister. Mm -hmm. And then Tiny came in. So it was like sometimes she was on our side. Sometimes she was on your side. So the mm -hmm. times when she wasn't on your side, you was the outcast. Right. And just to be uh, fair, like, even though I didn't like it, I understood it. Mm -hmm. Because I understand, you know, family sticks together or whatever, but just being on the other side of that, it used to be very frustrating. Now that we're adults, some of these things are playing out in front of the world. I have caught the blame sometimes for you and your sister not getting along or whatever. So I just want to ask you, do I be making you say or do no. anything? No, <laughs> no, you don't. You do not. No, and I don't know why. You get blamed for a lot. I, no lie, I be reading comments. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with escape. Right. And it'd be a whole nother situation. They'd be like, well, Candy, 
I was like, well, dang, she getting blamed for something. Our group and outside, they always, it's always, if it's raining outside, you did it. Oh, Lord, here we go. <laughs> it don't matter what. <laughs> Candy did it. I made a joke like that the other day. Something happened. Mm -hmm. Me and my husband was home. Something happened. And I said, you know Candy did it. And he didn't get it at first. And then he said, oh, you crazy girl. <laughs> <laughs> it was Candy's fault. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just kind of like funny to me when I see those comments or I hear those things. How do you um, do it though? I think for me, it's, I guess being on the housewives for a very, very long time has got me used to dealing with, Ugh. you know, negativity from people that I don't even know sometimes. And then sometimes, you know, from people that you be going back and forth with, you know, you have to learn how to get tough skin. I'll be trying to tell that to you because I know you allow everything to get to you. Yeah, I'll be like, when I see stuff, I'll be like, I'll, I'll then I let it sit for a while till they see it, and then I erase it, and then I block them. But I be like, you ain't finna come on my page thinking you gonna say what you wanna say. But sometimes I be like, all right, let me just block. I ain't got, I ain't got all day to go back and forth with these people. Mm, yeah, so I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning, and I'm trying to get tough skin. But I'm like, why? Like, what's the purpose? I don't know, but I know with you, it's just like I be, I be feeling so bad for you sometimes because I know this is a new thing for you. Yeah, it is new world that you're coming in but i think it's something that you do need to try to get used to because people like seeing you on tv they do you have made a real impact on people and especially since the last show came out people Good, love you know show. they got a chance to see the fun no, side of you I'm not and, what y'all saw on the last show well, they saw some of the craziness too, but I mean, I feel like all people have a good side and a crazy side. I think we all do. So I just feel like once you get comfortable in the fact that you can just be you mm -hmm. and not care about what anybody yeah. has to say about it, then you be all right. Yeah, I'm good on that end. It's just a, don't think you're going to say what you want to say to me and I ain't going to clap back. <laughs> I can go repent afterwards, but sometimes I be, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm trying to. I'm a work in progress. Speaking of the show. Candy and I were great friends before Escape started. Tiny and I was too. I brought them to my sister. We all hung out. We had a good time. We got in trouble together. How did you feel about going into the process of filming the show? So going into it, I really felt like, okay, it was a great idea. Us, SWV, the idea of us doing a show together. Two, you know, iconic groups really coming together. I. I didn't see the negative side. I didn't. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the first scene that my sister, well, one of the scenes my sister and I shot, I didn't think that it would have gone the way it went. That's why I brought Ocean. A lot of people like, why would she bring her daughter? First of all, my daughter's grown. Mm -hmm. She is 29 years old. She's grown. And I brought her to that scene because my sister and I had yet, we hadn't talked since the uh, Vegas. Me and Vegas. her fell out in Vegas mm -hmm. over business. I had went off on which was her personal assistant who was being our role manager at the time who left us. So I spazzed out on him and she took up for him and me and her got into it and we didn't talk for a while. Mm -hmm. So even before filming, I was like, okay, I was calling. She wasn't answering. I called my mom. I'm like, we, before we start filming this new show, we need to make up. Mm -hmm. Cause I didn't want us to be bickering and arguing on the show. I just didn't. It didn't make sense, but she didn't want to, she didn't want to do it. She mm -hmm. told tiny, Oh, they gonna see me turn up. I'm turning up on them. So I told Tiny, she turned up on who? Me and Candy for what? Like, <laughs> what you turn it up for? So it was already premeditated. So when I did the scene with her and I came in the house, I was actually glad to see her. She looked real pretty. I have never seen her in heels. You know how my sister dressed. She doesn't dress up. Mm -mm. Well, that, she did during the season. Yeah, but for that the was season. New. So my first time seeing her, she had on heels. She had a cute little makeup hair. I was like, oh, you look. So I was like, hey, you look pretty. But it was like real stiff. It was like, and it was like, from that moment, it was attack mode. Mika, it doesn't matter. Hmm. You know what I mean? When I sat down, she was like, you think you better than everybody. You don't know how to talk to people. So I was sitting there like, we really doing this right now in front of the cameras? Like, <laughs> first of all, who you think you're talking to? Because that's not even who I am. Nobody in this world can say I made them feel like I was better than them. Just, mm. just not who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. So she, she started saying all that. And then my mom started doing all this to me and took the phone out my hand. It was one scene where they both walked up on me. And she was like, what you, what, what you running for? So it was like, I sat there and I, was a, I felt attacked the whole time. It was like an hour in. So when the world saw me blow up, Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, she acting. Oh, she, that's a Tyler Perry. Like, no, I got tired of being beat up on. I mm -hmm. was attacked that whole scene. Like, in front of it got to the point where my daughter Ocean got up and walked out of the scene. Mm -hmm. She couldn't take it. She got up and walked out of the scene. And the, the producers were like, go back in there and help your mom. 
<laughs> now I help your mama. They said they said go in there and help your mama, and she was like, she was Ocean is that child that's like real laid back. She's like the peacemaker. Now, I had that been young Naya. It would have went to totally It would have been different. You know what I mean? Because she's fed up. Mm -hmm. You know, she's fed up with the situation that the world is just now getting a taste of. They've been living it. So it's like to see your mom go through certain things and I still tell them, hey, you still got to love. You still got to respect. But the hurt that they go through, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't, I can't explain that. But had not even there, the world, I'm glad she wasn't because they would have been like, oh, she's so disrespectful. They would have thought she was just going off just to go off. They didn't see mm -hmm. everything that happened. They didn't see my mom and my sister walking up on me and I'm walking behind the couch. Well, they cut in any scene, especially explosive scenes. Mm -hmm. It's like you only get about three minutes of a conversation that was three hours. Right. You know, so it's always tough when you watch it back because you be like, that's not how I went. They should have showed this or they should have showed that. From the jump, like early on when the season started, you guys, you know, clearly started having some serious turmoil. And not to mention the topic of the $30,000 came up in their very yes. first. And the reason why, let me tell you, a lot of people <laughs> like, I, and a lot of people like, how you going to throw your sister on the bus? How you going to talk about your family like that? Like. I was attacked and I knew she was saying all this stuff that wasn't true about me. And I was like, okay, if I say this one thing that's true, I know how to shut them up. Well, my mom was like, well, I got your back when? Like, no, because when they stole from me, you didn't say nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it just came out. It wasn't premeditated. I didn't need no storyline because I don't, when you talented it as we are, you really don't need no storyline. The talent really speak for itself. And that's not being, you know, vain or anything. That storyline we did not need. But that was, she was saying, oh, my sister need a storyline. I didn't need a storyline. Mm -hmm. I was being attacked in that scene. That was the only thing that I was like, let me get up out of it. I'm, I'm drowning. Let me get out of it. Y'all stole from me. That was my life jacket. And mm -hmm. I put that life jacket on and got kicked out the house. <laughs> <laughs> I think... I think the other part of that is like to, to just be, you know, when I look at everything that's been said, obviously everybody, you, you know, you and your sister, everybody recognized that's a family situation, mm -hmm. but other people got blamed for that coming up. Right. Everybody want to say, oh, Mona Scott was causing the drama. Nobody knew she that you were going to say this. Nobody knew I was going to get attacked in that first scene. Nobody knew that. We right. really thought... They were trying to make us go to the church mm -hmm. that first thing. They were trying to make us go to church. And I was like, I'm not going to church for us to sit here and talk about family issues when I already know where it could go. Like, I wasn't doing that. And so, like, my mom and my sister were like, oh, I was being selfish. I didn't want to be in the church. And I was so glad we did not get go to the church with that. That pastor would have been so embarrassed. Uh, everybody would have been so embarrassed. It just didn't make sense to go to the church. After I left, it was like everything that I, as a child, you know, you start, you you try to block things out of your memory, things that you've gone through. Mm -hmm. It was like everything just came up. And it was mm -hmm. like I was just being choked all over again. To me, I'm tired, mama. And it was just, it was crazy. I'm tired. If you so tired. I'm tired. You should have came I'm and talked to me. I've been talking to you about it. You know they stole my money. It was real life happening. Ain't nobody stole no, your money. No, you they did. And it still happened. Even though the show has been over, we are it's still, still going, through going through right now. Do you want to talk about that? Or no. Girl, what part? Real life that is happening right now at this moment. Okay, so we're still not talking. Right. We're not talking. Even as a group, it's only three of us. Yes. She's not talking to none of us. She changed her number. Um, when I asked my mom for the number, she was saying, oh, she needs her peace. Um, she wasn't ready for to talk to me. And I'm like, but you would think that I did something to her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I started feeling guilty for something I didn't even do. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, whenever she's ready to talk to me, then I guess we can, we can figure it out. But in the interim, I needed my peace. And I didn't realize it till after the, you know, time went by and I started healing and I started feeling, feeling free about certain situations. I was like, well, dang, that peace wasn't just for her. It was for me, too. Oh, for sure. Because, I mean, I just kind of feel like for a long time, you have always suppressed your feelings or played down what your likes, your dislikes, what you wanted, what you needed for the sake of supporting your sister. Right. And in this moment of filming this show, it was just basically like, you know what? I'm tired of that. This is me. This is who I am. And I'm not 
bowing down anything I want to do for the sake of your feelings anymore. Right, because bowing down was making me neglect my children, my grandkids, my husband. Mm -hmm. Like when you put somebody in front of your husband and your kids, then that's more important. And mm -hmm. it got to the point where, okay, this is not because I'm lacking this area. They're lacking in this area, and I can't do that no more. I'm not little sister anymore. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I'm not the little one anymore. I, I am, I'm your sister, but I'm not little sister. Two questions. This is a twofold question. Okay. Since we're talking about the now, then what people are getting blamed for. I've seen people blame the show, blame you or blame us or whatever for Latasha's album not being able to do what it needed to do. How do you feel about that? Well, first of all, I don't know if everybody knows, but that was that was supposed to be me and her deal. But that's why I was going to ask you about that. that was the oh, okay. part of the question. Of all, <laughs> but go ahead, keep answering it. Her, um, our old management got us the deal. She came down to my house. We sat, we talked. And I was like, I just feel like we, because she had started going to the studio writing songs. And I was like, I want to write too. Mm -hmm. Like, I write too. So everybody mm -hmm. know we know that the money comes from writing. So let's not be selfish. Mm -hmm. So we talked and she was like, well, no, I said we should split everything down the middle. She's like, well, I'm the writer, you know, I'm the I'm the entertainer, I'm the singer. You can act, you you know, stick to acting. Let me write. It was like she started getting mad, and I was like, no, we need to split it down the middle. Let's just be, let's be fair about the whole situation. And then after she left the house, my house, she never mentioned it again. And that was way before we fell out in Vegas. Before we started filming as well. Right, before we started filming. Mm -hmm. And never heard of it. So I guess we wasn't doing it. Going to the other question, I don't know. I guess the show and people seeing how she was on the show. Like, if you go back and see the show, every time we tried to do business, mm -hmm. it was, I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to talk about it. I got to pray about it. Right. Instead of just being honest and say, hey, y'all, I got a deal. I'm not really messing with y'all right now. Y'all can go ahead and do what y'all got to do. I'm going to do what I got to do. Mm -hmm. But instead, it's like we were being strong along, stringing along. How you string somebody along. Yeah, and that was the only thing. That was the thing that I didn't really like because um, realistically, when we start, first started filming, I didn't know, and I don't think Tiny knew. Well, I don't even know if you knew oh. that she had a deal in place because you didn't know that didn't the know. deal that you two had that she was going on and doing by herself. Right. So we didn't know coming into filming mm -hmm. that she was working on an album. All we knew was, oh, okay, well, we're supposed that the ultimate goal of this show, what right. we thought was for all of us to do a performance together. Right. But every time the conversation of a performance came up, she was acting like she didn't know she if she want wanted to do it. it. And it was just like, you guys may not know this from watching, but it took like two months. For her to make a decision, and, it, and filming wasn't but three months, right? Right. So it took like two months for her to finally give us an answer on if she was going to perform with us or not mm -hmm. for the sake of the show. But it was just kind of like weird because it's like, okay, the whole purpose of signing on to this, we knew we were supposed to be trying to do a show at the end, so we didn't understand that. And then when it finally and came- tour. Right. Or just a show and a tour. Right. And when it finally came out that she was doing her own thing- I was like, okay, cool, but that shouldn't have had anything with her stopping this or slowing down this process. Right, because she could do both, and Tiny told her that. Mm -hmm. Tiny was like, you can do Escape and do your solo project. I, but on the show, they actually never showed her telling you guys. Like, it never came full circle. Was there a point that they just left out? Like, did she ever actually tell you I got a deal? Mm -mm. We heard through other people. So she never, she never came to us and said, I have a deal. Yeah, I don't think we ever... Because the show didn't show it, but I didn't know if it mm -hmm. happened. Mm -mm. Did she? I don't think she so. She didn't come to us and tell us she had a deal. We didn't even know. We kept sitting there waiting every scene, like, okay, what are we doing? Are we going to move on? And she's like, we got, me and my sister got issues. We're like, right. okay, we got issues, but business, people go to work every day with issues, but they mm -hmm. go to work and do their job. Exactly. They go home and deal with their issues. And that's what I was saying about because at first she was trying to make it seem like it was some issue with me. And I'm like, girl, we don't even really be talking like that they no more. They cut part out. Yeah, they did they cut, cut it, it out. out. They cut it out. But originally, when we had that meeting at Tiny's house, mm -hmm. um, you and her was in full blown. Y'all weren't really talking at that point. But she made that whole conversation like her issue was with me. And I'm like, <laughs> and you remember when I was like, why are you worried about her? You need to be worried about trying to get it with your sister. Like, yeah. make up your sister. You worried about being friends with Candy. What about your sister? Yeah, they I was, cut all that out. Yeah, they took it out. I was so confused. <laughs> I was like, man, you ain't even had no argument lately. Why are you? 
why are you trying to turn this on me? So honestly, I just kind of felt like her, I felt like her goal was to come into this show making me the enemy again. And I think she was trying to back up on us. What's this? And Tiny said, I don't know if you remember, she said that she felt like from their conversation that she was upset because we got back close. We were getting close. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know why it's a that is an issue or a problem. We were close before we did escape. Right. I don't know why it's an issue or a problem. I personally feel like it's a good thing that you and I have come close again. I know we've been through to be able yeah. to get back to a place where we enjoy being around each other and have fun right. together. Yes, so I was like, I don't understand why it's a problem. I don't think it's hurting anybody, but Maybe I don't she know. Wants to share a room with you. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that that's not the case. <laughs> You're funny. Um, you are funny. No. That helped you guys bond 36 cities. I think it helped us. Yeah, definitely helped us bond and, and get back close again. Definitely, for sure. But I think we initially always had a bond. I feel like we had to get over the turmoil of the drama that, you know, that one moment and get you know get past that once we did it was like old times again i guess mm -hmm. like you know we picked up where we left off i was like Daddy. right yeah we so like, we're back. <laughs> so i i personally feel like i don't know if it would have did the same magic mm -hmm. <laughs> the other way around no. i do think that she probably wanted to make this show an opportunity for her music which she should mm -hmm. you know that's normal mm -hmm. you're supposed to promote what you got going on but I do feel like with the drama of the show, obviously it does affect. Yeah, it affected your it does. personality, how you come in, how you treat everybody. Because you also have escape uh, SWV fans too. So you have SWV fans saying, okay, what are we doing? Y'all going to do it or not? We see him wait for you to make a decision. Did you pray about it? So you have their fans, you have escape fans, and they want the music. They don't want the drama. And I'm sorry we brought the drum. I was not trying. I was just trying to save my life in that scene. And I I was not. I promise y'all I was not. I didn't come. I came thinking we was going to make up and it was going to be a great show overall. Mm -hmm. But was I sadly mistaken. And it just continued and continued and continued. And to this day, it is still going on. All right. So is there a fix? Is there a fix? Time with me and the time. <laughs> <laughs> I say time. I say you all need their group therapy. I tried to take. I I asked my mom and my sister to go to therapy, but they only feel like I need it. Cause did you hear it when she was going around doing her interviews, making mm -mm. people think I'm crazy? Wait. <laughs> she all her interviews are. Oh, my sister always had issues. She lashed out. You see what she did to Candy? I'm like, you know why I did that? It was like for you. I did, me and you never had an issue. And then for her to throw that up in my my loyalty, my you know what I'm saying to her for what I did to you in my mm. face. That was like a smack in the face with a handful of s. Mm. You know what I mean? When I saw that, it's like my heart was like, oh my god. You know what I mean? Mm. I was like, are we doing this? Like you called me crying in the phone. You called me saying, Candy said, oh, Tasha broke up the group. And crying, crying. I'm like, okay, I'm about to go get her. I'm going to attack. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. You know what I'm saying? It was mm -hmm. wrong. We never had issues. And now you th you throwing this up in my face. Oh, she lied. You know how she do. Oh, she's crazy. So I'm like, mm -hmm. that right there was like. Yeah. You still be looking at all her interviews? Well, yeah, because people be sending it to me because she's talking about me. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. Like, mm -hmm. I'm out of control. Uh, I don't hold myself accountable. I'm like, every time I hurt somebody or say something, if I knowingly, I'm going to apologize. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit here and say, I didn't do it. I did do it. And if I did it and offended you, I'm sorry. Like, I'm, tr I'm not going to do it again. I hold myself accountable. She has never in life, I have never in life gotten an apology for her. But nothing is swept under the rug. Well, my thing is, it's like, I've been asked multiple times, like, is there any way for you guys to ever, you know, fix things or whatever, whatever? And I just be trying to figure out, like, I don't know how. But that's why I just threw the question to you, because I know that's a question that people ask all the time. Even the business part, we have to respect each other as business women. And if we as business women say we're not involving our husbands, you can't throw your husband down our throat and make us have to deal with somebody who's taking money from us or taking money under the table. It's not fair to us. Mm -hmm. So you don't respect us as business women. You know what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. like until 
she realized that Edward still in hand did not have anything to do with our business. It's not going to work because we've all said it multiple times. You said it. I said it. Tiny said it. No, we have a manager. We have people in place to handle escape business. Outside of escape, we have other people handling our individual business. Mm -hmm. But it's like until you respect us as business women, he's not coming on board. It's, if you think he's coming on board, it's not going to happen. Okay, all oh, fairness, I have to ask you a question that she said, when I wasn't around, she said that you guys were just fine and that y'all had him managing Good your affairs Let me tell you, as a group. He was not managing our affairs. We had a, we had a deal in place. Whoever brought uh, shows to the table would get a percentage, get commission. Okay. That was the deal that everybody knew about. Okay. So you had Tina bringing stuff to the table. Mm -hmm. You had, he brought stuff to the table. But when Womack brought seven shows to the table, she turned it down. When my Why? husband brought shows to the table, she turned it down. The first time Womack brought seven shows to the table, her husband said, oh, ain't nobody eating off my wife. Yeah. And we was like, do you think that's fair? That's not fair that he can bring stuff to the table and get commission, but then when everybody else brings up the table, she said, oh, it's a no for me. And it started getting, that's when things started getting kind of crazy. But mm -hmm. because, come on, everybody's trying to bring stuff. So it was like, mm, everything was like, it's a no, it's a no. And then Tiny was like, man, forget this. Forget, like, it was, it just didn't make sense. Was he double mm -hmm. dipping, you think, Tim? Getting his commission and the other thing he was getting? Ain't no telling. I think, you know, more so than anything, it's just the point of, okay, so what are you saying? Right. It only works is if only your man brings when up. he brought stuff to the table. Well, that was something that was happening when I was not there, right. to he be clear. There. And but when I was there. we knew, we knew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we knew, okay, if you bring this to the table, Tina would start, she started bringing, like, it started, it started going like this. You know, allegedly, you know, I was told that he was like, well, I need to get commission off this. If my stuff that she was bringing to the table, she was giving him some of her commission. For what? Because he wasn't going to let Tasha perform. So he was double-dipped. Yeah. Yeah, see, but see, that's, oh, okay. So I saw some people in the comments were like, well, if somebody brings gun, why shouldn't they? Okay, so for me, this is this is the thing. We as a group, because we're in the group, right, it's people different. automatically call us. Like mm -hmm. people call me all the time or call you know my team or whatever to book the group, right? If I was to say, I'm not doing any shows, but the ones that my team controlled or that we booked, then that wouldn't be fair, correct? It wouldn't be. You know, so the way you keep it fair is just like, okay, if you get something, we as a group members or our personal teams, we just throw it to Management. the representation just the whole entire and group. just keep it clean because right. just because sometimes the same person may call you and they, they may call, call me, you. but I, they may have just I called me first. I may have just picked up the phone first. So who get the commission then? No. no. It's like you only allow the manager to get commission. And then on top of that, it's just, you know, you don't allow you can't in a in a group you gotta have an equal balance of power if one person feels like they can control the rest then that's a problem mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's but a problem the, when we was with when we was three of us we didn't have management mm -hmm. but when we came back with four of us you know what mm -hmm. i mean we had just well towards the end of that's when, when the management that's when y'all picked the that's when right, it was towards the end mm -hmm. that's when the other management came in but that's when you was brought in quickly Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, mm -hmm. we need candy bag. Me and Tony was like, for what? <laughs> we, no disrespect. We was like, she doing her thing. Like, you was doing what you were. You wasn't even trying to come Right, and then y'all didn't have to split the money with me, so y'all was good. <laughs> Girl. No. It's no, okay. It's okay. It's, no, okay. it's not that you wasn't you wasn't trying to come back at that time. Right, no. You was I, doing your own thing at the time. It wasn't no drama. Yeah, no, 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 no. It wasn't no, no drama. Mm -hmm. We knew what it was. You said no, and that's what it was. So we kept going. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, in the midst of us keep going, us, you know, keeping the train rolling, it was her and her husband's idea to bring you back. And, and we didn't know why until we <laughs> saw the text messages. Because <laughs> me and Tanya was like, I don't think she want to come back. Well, I don't think she want to come back right now. The text messages told a lot. Mm -hmm. How I, did you feel when you saw that? Did you feel like you got got? Yes, I did. Okay, so the text messages we're referring to is when um, Tamika got text messages from the promoter that was between him and Rocky. And basically the text messages was letting us know that the promoter was paying. They had a side deal agreement where they was giving him extra money to get all four of us to show up for a show. But the crazy part about the side deal was when you came back, the money dropped. Mm. So it was like. We was making more money without her. What is going on? But the side deal was the money that it dropped to. Right. 
So let's just say for instance, I'm just I'm not giving you exact numbers, but let's say if there was the group was getting two hundred thousand a show, and then all of a sudden, so we made more than that. I'm not saying exactly what I'm trying just trying to guess. They've been trying to guess. Oh, we made more than that. I'm not saying exact numbers. Oh, go ahead. I'm mean, not using exact numbers. Okay, I'm giving them an example. So if you say, oh, you know, you got two hundred thousand dollars a show, and then that person is, comes back and was like, oh, well, no. And, you know, I can only give you guys 175. 175. But then later on, you find out that they already had a side deal between them where that person was getting 25. You're like, wait, hold on. So basically, you're telling me that we can get what we were supposed to get, but really it's because they you having to pay it. you right. part of our sure money. Everybody's there, right? Right, which that, that was very upsetting because at the end of the day, um, I don't know what they had agreed to when I wasn't there, but that was already understood that we mm -mm. do not do no side deals where nobody should be getting any side because of extra money that nobody else knows about. Right. Um, and you weren't going to do business with Rocky. Yeah, and I had already you said from clear. the very jump, I didn't want to have any involvement with anything that Rocky was right. a part of. You made it very clear. So to me, I just felt like, oh, so... And it the led the text said something about she was gonna get us to do whatever she wanted us to do, and so it just made us sound like some little dummies that she was able to lead. We was dummies. And just lead along, <laughs> drag along. We, we just followed up to whatever she wanted to do. We gotta stay together. Look at the bigger picture. They kept saying, "Look at the bigger picture. Look at the bigger picture." That was um for me. It was it sent me through the roof, but <laughs> through the roof yeah, too. I think everybody was upset, and I think I was a little bit. Um, a little bit more upset that when she saw the text that she still acted like it wasn't real or something. Like like we were tripping. Like we were I'm shocked she called him. Yeah. Well, yeah, but when she called, he was like, You ain't gotta talk for me. You ain't like in other words, you ain't gotta do this because she had her deal. You ain't gotta say nothing. She's you ain't gotta deal with that. How did you feel when you first saw the text? Girl, message? I was pissed. Cause the the story is deeper than that. Which okay. I can't really I don't know if I should talk about it, but it was other people that could have got affected by. Oh, I'm thinking about the other part, the threat when he threatened the. Promoter. Oh, those text messages. Those yeah. were different. Yeah, when he threatened the promoter after the promoter said he won't give him no more money. He threatened the promoter, and then after he threatened the promoter, when the promoter spoke to us, he said, "You know, the reason why he didn't know black dress because y'all." Yeah, they, and that they was both because don't. what yeah. he said. Yeah. yeah, every action is a reaction. So she went around and was like, oh, he threatened him. He threatened my, my husband. Like, no, your husband threatened him first. And in the issue of that, somebody else got put into that. That could have went left. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, why is it always an issue? Like, yeah, so anyway, it's needless to say, it was it was a it was very messy during the time of filming. And um a lot of people why but why would you expose your sister like that? Why would you expose her husband? Why would they take from us? Mm -hmm. Why would they steal from us? Like no, I, I, and I still don't understand that how our people, African Americans, we, because of family, we sweep it under the rug. Right. Because that's uncle, he molested the child. Oh, that's uncle. We can't tell nobody about it. We got to be quiet about it. Or because this person stole, but that's auntie. We got to be quiet because we family. But if family ain't acting family, like, we got to get out of that, black people. We have to get out of that stigma that we got to protect people who don't want to protect you. Mm -hmm. Okay. A word. A word. Put it on a t-shirt. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that is true and it's sad. It's it, so is sad. sad. it is sad. It is sad. I would expose that. I would never do my sister well, like yeah. that. But your sister ain't never stole from you. Your sister ain't trying to blackmail you with a sex tape. People, I would never do my sister like that. Okay, fast forward to that. Because they, they're probably going to miss. They're going to be like, what, what is she oh. talking about? Okay, so fast forward. Um, Not during filming, but lad, that was just a few months ago. Mm -hmm. During the course of while the show was on air, I don't know if you heard or you didn't hear, but there was like some text that was sent to different people in the group. Not me. I never got the text. Mm -hmm. It was sent to all the blogs. Yeah, it was sent to bloggers. And um, basically it was saying stuff about... Um, yeah, they basically were saying like if she didn't take back what she said... I apologize to my sister like I apologize to you. It was going to release my tape. They were going to release pictures that they claimed that I sent to that devil, which I did not. He cracked my phone and I have evidence and everything. Back in, back, like, it was like 2000 and I want to say seven. 
I had got a text message from my phone saying that my, you know how when you change your password. Mm -hmm. So I looked at it and it was like, your password was successfully changed. So I was like, oh, maybe this is not, you know, I'm not really paying attention. So then I didn't even think about it. Mm. And further on, later on, like I was there with one of my friends and my friend was like, you might need to check into that. Mm. And I was like, no, I didn't change my password, but I didn't. So when I made the phone call to the company, they were like, oh yeah, your husband called in. And I was like, my husband, by that time, at that time, I, was, I had pictures, I had videos, because I was dating. I was dating. I wasn't even married. I was divorced at that time. Mm -hmm. So they said, your husband, and they said, Darius Scott. My ex name is Darius. I said, his last name ain't Scott. I said, um, could you please give me the number? Do you know the number that called? And when they gave me the number, and I wrote the number down, and I put the number in my phone, his name came up. Hmm. So I was like, how they said he had your social security number, like he was your husband, but I'm the only one on the account. It's not like it's two lines. You're talking about Rocky. Right. Mm, okay. Right. So now, and then after that, my first husband who kept cheating on me. Mm. So he was cheating on me. We we're 19, 20 years old. We were young. Got married young. So, okay. He cheated. So I cheated back with mm. a guy from New Jersey and uh, me and him start having, we had a little relationship. He mm -hmm. was doing him, and I was doing me with this guy from New Jersey. We did a sex tape, and after that, we broke up, but I kept the sex tape because me and my husband got back together, and I wasn't taking that tape in the house. Mm -hmm. So I told my sister, just hold on to this because I want to see it. Yeah, I, I look real good. I look real good. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, baby, what's my name? But anyway, yeah, I, was, I was wrong. Where I that was, was back in the day. That was back in the day. That was back in the day. Would you want to tell me? I didn't look good. So anyway, my dumb self. Um, gave her the tape, told her to hold on to it so I could see it every now and then or whatever. And then I went back to get my tape and she said somebody had stole it out of her safe. So I'm like, how somebody still out of my, out of your safe? Like who else got the, the code? She's like, I don't think I locked it that day. Well, who was at your house? Yeah, so, like that's random. Somebody right. stealing something about your safe. She said only her and her husband had the combination. So I'm like, find my tape. Fast forward to now. I'm being blackmailed by the same tape that she had that she stole. Oh my gosh. And I'm like, now I got to tell my husband now. I got to tell my kids. I, my kids, my grown kids, you know, when I talk mm -hmm. to them, they're like, well, you know, don't even worry about it. But then I have a nine year old. So the text message said, if I don't apologize and say that I lied about the money that was taken from me, then that text message was going to, my um, picture was going to be released. And my tape was gonna be released. And then they said they was gonna say some stuff about uh, the rest of us rest in the group too. But hmm? it was crazy because my sister husband did a it was being recorded. So right. that was the same time everybody got the text, the threatening text. Yeah. He said everything that was on the threatening text. Nothing had been leaked. It was just a threat on this right. text on this right. text message. But it just so happened. Now mind you, we weren't even talking to him or Tasha at the time, right? Mm -hmm. It just so happened that he was doing an interview with the lady saying, oh, yeah, well, you know what's about to come up next. The big news. The big news. It was happy. You know, the big news is. Yeah. Like, that um, around spreading these lies. Yeah, that's some tape and the pictures coming out on Tamika. He was saying these things that's supposed to come out. And so for us, it was like, okay, clearly you the one that sent the text. Yes, because even Freddie O called me. Right. He was like, hey, I... I so, so you, yo, what he say? How he say? Oh, yo, take your um, tape getting ready to come out. <laughs> he was laughing, and I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, yeah, I, I talked to Rocky. Mm. So he called Freddie O. He called Tasha K. And then I got DMs from other people that I didn't even know are bloggers. They were like, I'm just letting you know your sister, your her, your husband. And I got all of that in my DMs. They called around telling people about this tape and this, mm. and it's getting ready to come out. Just give you the heads up for your family. I ain't trying to be funny that, but. Had that been my dude, and I not knowing that he did an interview about my group members and my sister lying, you know what I mean? You try to blackmail my sister, I would be in his ASS like white and rice. Yeah. I wouldn't be sitting there allowing this to happen. Mm -hmm. it, then it would be a phone call. I don't care if we ain't talking. Hey, let me tell you something. I don't know what's going on, but I ain't got nothing to do with this. Right. So when you quiet, you're just as guilty. Uh, I've been saying that. <laughs> We were teenagers. Like, That's crazy. I've been saying that. And it's so funny. You know what is so funny to me? And I don't even, all the craziness that we've dealt with over the years, like, we haven't even, people be like, oh my God, y'all had so much going on. Y'all don't even know to have. Like, it's still way more stuff that we have dealt with that we haven't even talked about on um, 
you know, publicly or whatever. And I'm just like, for me, a lot of this stuff is just like, y'all seeing this now and y'all feeling this now, but this been going on since we was teenagers. A lot of people always say, what would be different now than um, when y'all first came out if it was social media? I'm like, y'all would just... <laughs> Child, we would have made the blog so many times and we would have yes, been girl. done. What? I don't know how we would have made it with if the blogs would have been yes, happening back then. Girl. So, you know, I hate to make this a thing, of, you know, talk about that because, it, you know, clearly we haven't been talking about it in the public for since the show has been off. But, you know, a lot of people have been asking for you to come and do speak on it. Mm -hmm. So clearly I wanted you to speak on it. Yes. With that being said, OK, now people ask me, what are we going to do about this name, child? <laughs> Legally, you and your yes. sister own the name Escape. Right. So back in 2016, my sister gave me a call right before we got back together. Mm -hmm. She was like, hey, she was like, um, Candy and Tiny tried to own the name and they the paperwork they did fell through. Now, nice. since it, it was, it was a paperwork. I saw the paperwork. It was your name, Tiny name. And I think it was, it was attached to Tina. I can tell you exactly what happened. Cause I wasn't even really dealing with nothing with right. the group. Let um, me tell mine, then you tell you. Okay, you go ahead. So she was like, they had, they were trying to get the name, but it fell through. She was like, she didn't have the money at the time, and this is probably the only reason why my name was on there. Mm -hmm. She said, we can get the name. I don't have the money, but I will pay you back if you do it. Both of our names can go on there, so I paid for it, mm -hmm. and that's probably the only reason why my name is on there right now. So pay for it. We got the name, did the paperwork, and mm -hmm. then we owned the name. Now. Once we came back together, mm -hmm. we were supposed to add y'all names on there. Mm -hmm. This piece of paper that we were supposed to sign. Mm -hmm. Tina drew up the paperwork mm -hmm. and I signed my part. Mm -hmm. Tina signed her part. Okay. But y'all forgot about it because we started touring. Right. And things started going on. So y'all never mentioned it again. Mm -hmm. And when y'all did mention it again, it came back up. It was like, okay, so what are we going to do? We need to add their names. I was like, right. we need to add their names. And she was like, well, I add tiny name. I was like, you can't add tiny name without adding candy name. We got to add both of them. No, she <laughs> wanted to add tiny <laughs> name. Not tiny name. No, she didn't sign it. <laughs> so you're the only name on there then at this It's point. just me and her name. Oh, yeah. Both of them. Yeah. So now we have the, uh, the attorney have drawn up paperwork where we have to sign to bring everybody. Right now, we're the only ones doing shows. Mm-hmm. So it's only fair that everybody's name goes on the paperwork mm -hmm. because we are Escape S4. It's, the ball is in her court. Is she going to sign the paper or not? Which, uh, <sighs> anyway, um, <laughs> years back, I minded my own business, honey. And I believe Tiny's mom, maybe Tina and Tiny's mom, I don't know. They were like, oh, we're going to file for the trademark and we're going to put your name on there. Um, I, I was like, all right. Mm -hmm. So I guess they put me and Tiny's name on there. And she didn't finish the paperwork. It fell through. Something she did. I thought they had. did it, but they didn't renew it. Oh, I don't know. It just kind of like now me, you're supposed to renew it. So she came to me and said, "Y'all had the name, but it didn't go through." She showed me the paperwork, and so she was like, "You know, just give me the money, and then we would put our names on it." I still get to get my money back from it. Mm. <laughs> well, it's yours. You pay for what you pay for know, right? what you needed. When we first asked her about doing shows the name or whatever her team or whatever said move forward yes. she hit us back about it and was like i thought you know since we did a different name when candy went there y'all should have a different name when we ain't there and we sent her the screenshots of what her this is before she changed her number y'all <laughs> <Right. laughs> we sent her the screenshots of what her team said and then she was like oh, okay well, the reason well. why we had to talk to her team because she wasn't responding to us right we were having our own and this we were no having... but then she responded and said yeah, okay she responded, but a long time was a lot of times she did not. We oh yeah, majority of the time we she did. We were talking and talking and talking, and she didn't respond. So that's when, when she did respond, they also reached out to her own personal management at the mm -hmm. time. So it was like not just her on it, but her and her manager. Right. So then she said something about when, you know, we done doing the shows with the promoter that we were working with, that she wanted to be a part of the shows again. That's what she was saying when we were promoting the TV show. But they you also hear said something? that they were gonna be. She was booked up this whole year. And then her management team. No, that was that was when we was doing shows at the end of last year. Last, I'm talking about year. but I'm talking about this year when we was promoting the T V show. 
right before the show aired and she was doing those interviews with us and you got mad on the red carpet and it was starting going girl oh my gosh baby you didn't hear what she said oh my gosh i had blank blank out like she's we doing this right now she was like they asked a question she was like if my sister stopped disrespecting my mom i'm like i didn't disrespect your mom it's always my mom it's not our it's never our it's always my it was it just got to the point like we're here all these reporters and you trying mm -hmm. to show your ass so what I did, I said, okay, Tamika, before you go black and black out, I just walked away. You know what I mean? Being a bigger person, I walked off and I cooled off. And then I came back and joined y'all for the rest of the interviews. But that was just, it's like she knows how to push my buttons. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which brings me back to... <laughs> I, didn't, I must have walked off. I ain't here. You didn't hear us say that. The only thing I remember when her management team last year, when we were trying to do the shows in December of last year, they said she was booked up the whole year, which would mean this year. And they would let us know when she's ready. Her but that, that's true. Team, they said that. And her management team have not came back and said she's ready. Well, so but even if they did right now with the the problems and blackmail and the talking about your members saying this person can't sing this person sound nasally this person like you're going on a uh she's going on a tour a dogging out escape tour it's you like, said a dogging out escape tour it was like okay <laughs> you're talking about this person vocals you're talking about but when she started talking about that's your girl tiny's her girl was mm -hmm. her girl mm -hmm. so if you tiny wasn't even off limit so it's like what are we doing? I'm crazy. She nasally. You can't sing. What's next? And you change your numbers. So, oh, Jesus take the wheel. Jesus take the wheel. Exactly. So you're saying, so, because I think by her saying that on the red carpet, that was her speaking for her management, that she's ready. Do you guys think that you guys are ready to welcome back? I think we need more time. I just say that because, I mean, I agree with what Tamika's saying. It's just kind of like, um, how are we supposed to mend? anything when we still haven't had any clarity no on nothing. you know the 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 money thing that and i'm not even talking about the job money thing i'm talking about the stuff that was done on the side for with the group we never had any clarity he said it never happened or understanding they, they both said it never happened but the text message said it did. We never talked through it because when she was there with us and we were trying to talk about it, she, she kind of like dismissed us. So we never got any, any clarity and understanding. So I feel like that is still weighing. I feel like so we... I'm just going to go and say it. I'm going to go and say it. I'm just going to go and say it. What? I did a temporary TPO order on my sister and her husband because I was getting threats. I was getting text messages. He even said threats, I felt, live when he said, I lied on him and you don't do that to me. Or you got to deal with what comes with that. So I take, I don't take certain things lightly. So I did a temporary TPO order and the judge granted it to me. Based on the evidence that I presented, I was granted the TPO order on them. So when you say, are we, can we get back together? It's a TPO order out because he's threatening me. And a lot of people, and this, this is crazy, this is where it gets crazy. The TPO order protects me just in case because he's known to pull out on people. It protects me and it also protects them because my husband is very quiet. He's at his wit's end. It's not easy. My thing is let God deal with it. Let God be the avenger. We couldn't miss. No. We don't want it because we no. don't want no threat. So we don't it's want no threat. Okay. It's, not, it's to protect both parties. Right. It's to protect both parties. My husband is dealing with a lot. People are coming at him like, Oh, why are you not taking up for your wife? This guy is doing all this. He's blackmailing your wife. He's doing all this. He's doing all that. My husband is a man. It is the hand of God that is keeping him at bay to say, okay, I'm going to sit here and let God deal with that. But when you have people that's DMing you, you got people sending messages. What type of man? How you security? Oh, you top notch security, but you letting this do this. I'm like, we, we sit and we talk. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. I'm just being honest. It's not easy. We sit and we talk and I'm like, you got to think about our money. You going to jail. If you see him and beat him up, what everybody wants, you're going to go to jail. And I got to raise my child by myself. So everybody who's DMing, stop it saying, oh, you need to protect your wife. You need to go beat him up. You need to go kill him. We've gotten messages saying, what type of man are you? That's not easy to sit back all these years. And I say, babe, this is my family. 
let me deal with it and he sit back and, and not, it's not easy it's not easy will smith protected his wife he got attacked i said baby the same people that's coming after us saying you need to do this will be the same ones jewelry sentencing you to life we're sitting we're praying and we're waiting on god to deal with the situation it's not easy but the tpo order is to protect he don't need to come around me mm. he don't something happened I already told my kids, if something happened, we know what it is. First of all, my husband ain't going to let it happen. Stay away from me. So it won't happen. Mm. Because he will, by any means necessary, if he feel like my life is threatened, he's not going to sit there and let me die. Stay over there with your threatening self mm. and let me stay here. So to answer your question right now, no. It'll just be us three. You guys need time. We need time. Mm. The group performances. What you feeling about it? I still, still doing shows, <laughs> girl. I, the, it's like in the dress room, the energy, the way we are. Like, dearly Father, thank you for all of our blessings and thank you for bringing us together to do yet another show together. We there, we're in the back. It's like we're in high school again. We <laughs> laughing, we cracking up, we telling jokes, we in the back trying to come up, dance. You know the routine, practicing. It's just like the sisterhood is here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It feels really, really good. And y'all, y'all chicks, I was about to say y'all hoes. Y'all yeah! <laughs> chicks be singing down. It be times I be like, okay now. Then I look over there at Tiny. I'm like, oh, 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 this what we doing right now? Mm -hmm. Like, y'all ain't taking no prisoners. I'm telling you, like, we, we sound really, really good. We've been working hard. Rehearsing, we got rehearsal today. Mm -hmm. And we, we giving our fans, we giving our fans our best. When people come to the show, they gonna get a shot because we not laughing. We we giving our all and we still mm -hmm. out here doing what we supposed to do for our fans and and we're feeling the love. It feels so good. Feel so good. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you feeling good? I want the food tastes good. Thank you. So I mean, if the goodness has felt down to the food yeah, yeah, and yeah. the book, yeah, and and, and your seasonings. Yeah, yeah. Now, which seasoning is your favorite? I cook with all of them. Which one do you use the most? The all-purpose. You can use all-purpose on everything. I can't keep that in. All-purpose. The vegetables. I use. I put the vegetables in the macaroni and cheese. Oh, okay. That's what you taste the vegetable seasoning for the salmon. It's the the my sweetener, and I use a little of uh, the Cajun seasoning and a little seafood. And for the cabbage, I did a little of the Cajun and I did a little of the, the vegetable. All right, so y'all know y'all gotta get the seasonings and the book. Yeah, southernfuse.com. Now, know. this music. Yes. So you decided to do a single. Yes. It's called Tonight. Now, how was that? And she got Method Man on there. <laughs> yes, yes. Man. So, so um, how did that come together? So tonight was a song that I wrote. Did you write it by yourself? Did you collaborate? Yeah, I wrote it by myself. Mm -hmm. Of course, Method wrote his part, but mm -hmm. I wrote it some years back. It's an older song. And then like coming off of this show, I was cleaning up one day and I started listening to the song and it was like, can't no drama come away. Tonight I'm gonna celebrate. And I was like, you know what? I think I need to celebrate me. Mm -hmm. Because, and I've told Mona this, so I'm not talking about Mona behind her back. I felt slighted because I felt like I wanted my seasonings in my cookbook to be shown on the, on the show, but it was showing the dysfunction of my family took over. And I just felt like I didn't get a chance to show what I've done outside of the group. Cause we've all done things. And I felt real, real, real proud because I created these spices in my kitchen that mm -hmm. I had to go sit with a food scientist. So it's like a process to what I've done. Mm -hmm. And then the cookbook, like I just wanted tiny cooked out of it. Mm -hmm. And you know she made drinks out of it, mm -hmm. but they never mentioned what the book was. So mm -hmm. I felt like, and I told Mona, I was like, that's not fair. That wasn't fair. But she was like, well, you know, you, we have so much stuff that we had to edit, so much stuff that we have to cut down. You got seven women mm -hmm. that we trying to follow their lives, or whatever. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna put my book in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hear that. So anyway, I felt like this song was saying, okay, just in case nobody celebrates you, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna celebrate myself. I'm not thinking about, I'm not stressing. I'm not thinking about no bills. I ain't thinking about no baby daddies. Like that song is saying, this is my night and this tonight I'm gonna celebrate me. So it's tonight. Mm -hmm. So it's a Nas, Nas One Mic. The song came from Nas One Mic and I wanted to do like an R&B flair. My big brother met the man, heard it and he was like, yo sis, you killing that bridge, yeah. So he got on it, did his 
part and we went to New York and we shot it because he's still filming. Um, mm -hmm. He's filming. So the only day he was off was that day. Mm -hmm. So we shot it in New York. We shot it in Brooklyn. Um, we shot some parts in New Jersey. We shot it and it's out. It's available on all digital platforms. That's dope. And it's called Tonight. Woo! Now, Tamika is just killing the game right now. She got the music, Thank the you. cooking. Thank you. What else you got going? And she doing movies, y'all. Oh yeah, I just did a, a movie that's coming out at the end of the year. It's a Christmas movie, Christmas Ringer. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. That is good. Anything else you got going on that you want to tell the people uh, about? Young Naya, my daughter, Young Naya, her CD just her EP just came out called Switch It Up. So make sure y'all follow Young Naya, official Young Naya on IG. That's my baby. And then one thing about Naya, she talks about real life situations. She's not talking about her butt and her tits and her, yeah. <laughs> how good her coochie is. She's a real lyricist. Not saying that people who talk about that isn't, but she's like your kids can listen to her music. Well, thank you for the good food. Yeah, yes. Thank you for the good conversation. Yes. And thank you for watching Speak On It. Well, speak on it. All I need is one night, one flight. For that forbidden fruit, just one bite. Got Twitter fingers only for one type.